Hey, how's it going? Come a little closer. Come on. Got something to ask you. Just a little, a little closer. Just come on. Come on. Come on. In. Come on. I'm all bite. Come on. Just a little. Lean a little bit. Come on. All right. A little, a little too close. Just, just back up a second. All right. I just I need a little bit of my, my space. All right. So. I want to read my poem. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to everybody's favorite game show. It's not a game show, but it's still everyone's favorite show. <laughs> Doki Doki Literature Club. Are you ready? write some poetry because I am we're back we're getting weird everything's getting weirder every single episode it really should be the motto of the show at this point that everything gets weirder because that's what happens every every single episode I'm like oh I wonder what to possibly top this weird crazy demonic thing that happened and then they do it so this episode probably gonna be about the same thing we have to write a poem first and you know me I take my poem very seriously. Sticky. Pain. <laughs> Depression. Rain cloud. Graveyard. Journey. Landscape. Agonizing. I'd never noticed that when I clicked on a word, Yuri's character jumped. Because I guess that word is something that Yuri would like in a poem. Has that been there the whole time? I've never noticed that before. Misery. Disown, uncontrollable, despise, destiny, romance, alone, sadness, fickle, philosophy, insight, and incongruent. What a lovely poem. So I guess that you could have really focused your poems in by paying attention to who actively was jumping. I've never paid attention to that. I guess I just kind of guessed my way into my position, which I do pretty much with everything else, so it only works out that way. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little bit more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Uh, welcome back, Nuclear Waste. Uh, hi, Yuri. <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me. My name. Who would have thought Nuclear Waste would have made this far <laughs> in Literature Club? Back again for another day. I'm not sure if it's me, or if it's just serious expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little bit. Oh yeah, I forgot. Things got a little heated in the literature club. Uh, um, Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Masuki is reading manga at a desk, and surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. Hmm? About yesterday, I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before, and something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please, don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Nusuki as well. Yuri, I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple of days, I could tell that something was off yesterday. Maybe we're just a little sensitive because it was our first time sharing pubs. Or maybe Monica is using her demon powers to take over everyone's emotions and drive this club into the underworld where she can feast on our souls. Or maybe we were just a little bit sensitive. I don't really know. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way that you can be a bad person. I don't know. If you should think that about anyone, because you never know, they could just turn out to be like a murderer, or like a bank robber, or somebody who puts the toilet paper upside down. Those are all bad people. You shouldn't, like, judge somebody that soon, even if it's in a, it's a good, good manner, because they, they could always change, you know? You should always be willing to adapt in situations, and I should just shut up and read the, read the sentence. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Ah, uh, nuclear waste. Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. <laughs> I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around it. Ah, uh, sorry, what I'm saying right now. I, I, I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Ah, uh, uh, no, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Hmm, man. Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either? Hmm, that's a tie. Yuri's clearly taken back by how calmly Snooki is dressing her. 
N no, I, I haven't. Oh, geez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. Huh? Da -da -da. What? What? Why are you looking at me like that? Well, um, Mizuki, about yesterday, I, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said, and I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So, Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? What? Huh? Jeez. What? What's on your mind? I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. What? 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 This is weird and different. Normally, th this kind of creepy text just goes by so quick you can't read it, but now it's staying long enough for me to read it. Weird. You're the kind of person who worry too much about the little things, aren't you? I thought, thought. But, but. I'll accept your apology anyway, if it helps you feel better about it. But besides, it's kind of nice to hear, since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. So, is Nasuki under some kind of demonic control and not Yuri at this point? Or was Yuri under some kind of control yesterday but kind of snapped out of it so she's not completely possessed at this point because I'm assuming everything is demons. There's no rational explanation for any of this that doesn't end up with demons somewhere in the mix. That's not. Nasuki turns to me. You're still on trial though. Hey, trial for what? I didn't, I didn't murder anyone. Suddenly the door swings open. Oh, sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Ah, uh, nah. Well, Nasuki was. I, I was not. <laughs> what, what took you so long anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ha ha ha. Hmm, huh. that makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. Hmm, <laughs> I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Oh, piano? I was unaware that you played music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. So, I'm still impressed. Ha, huh. ha, uh, well thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. <laughs> That's... Monica looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a bit better, I will. Hmm, that sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? Why do you, why do you question me? Why can't I just say something? You, you didn't is that so anybody else. In that case, I won't let you down, nuclear waste. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah... I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, <sighs> don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. Huh, I see. I'm still not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Huh, thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Uh, no, not really. I chose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. Besides, Yasuki already ran into the closet. Nuclear waste. Um, since your compliment put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Yeah, definitely. I planned on it anyway. Okay. Can we start now? Let's find a place to sit. Ah, I'm being a little forceful, aren't I? I'm sorry. My heart just won't stop pounding for some reason. Don't worry about it. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Huh, yeah. But I need to try to calm down. I won't be able to focus on reading like this. Take your time. Yuri takes a deep breath and pulls a copy of her book out of her bag. Honestly, these things seem to be moving at a quicker pace almost. Like, in the first playthrough, it took us a while to kind of get connected with Yuri, but it seems like this is kind of rushed almost. Like it's be planned out by some demonic force. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. 
Thank you very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention your, for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the hot water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then I'll go get the, uh, some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down in the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. <laughs> it's a little creepy. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moved really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Is that something people notice? I wonder if I have a specific movement pattern, but probably just gotta be completely random and awkward like my normal speaking patterns, but it's interesting. I've never noticed that about people. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks. I'll be right back. Ah, huh, I might as well walk with you. Huh, that's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. Picture in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. I wonder why she didn't want us to come with her. Ah, huh. did Yuri leave you again? Uh, no, it's not like that this time. Uh, she's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. No problem, dot dot dot. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. <laughs> you can hear the music slightly in the background as if it was just in the classroom. Okay. The most logical place for you to be would be at the nearest water fountain. So I start heading down the hallway. Ha. 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 What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. I don't like this. It sounds like breathe. <laughs> Why? Why would it sound like breathing? <sighs> A sharp inhale. Like someone sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Gah. Oh! What the f- Hey, I'm back! What just happened? Yuri was hurt. I just read sharp something. I didn't get to read any of that. I want to read that. I wonder what happened. There's, there's got to be something in those dialogues that would have some kind of secret or something about the story. Something. Because the game obviously didn't want us to read that. I want to go back and read that in my recording. I'm, I'm really curious. I'm back. Thanks for waiting patiently. Nuki the Waste. Do you like a long tea? Ah, yeah. Anything is fine. So not even- We don't even remember going out. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if it's not an expert on tea or anything. Haha. <laughs> In that case, you'll even be more impressed. Ha, huh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. Hmm. You must be in a good mood now. Hmm. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out, it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Ah. That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, nuclear waste. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. Yeah, see, I told you, it was. it's a little rushed, honestly. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Yuki the Waste, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Huh? Why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pains fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. Well, it's most likely because my... Ah. Uh, my, um... Your posture, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Always hunched over. <laughs> like, uh, while well, reading. Ah, uh, yes. I have terrible reading posture. <laughs> so that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. 
So I remember this dialogue like exactly word for word through from my first uh, playthrough. So it's like interesting to see what remains the same and what's different and weird and demonic and creepy going from the first playthrough to this. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it, since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Huh? Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hands, not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now, I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her dress. <laughs> Meanwhile, Yuri really hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. Dot, dot, dot. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrappers. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, oh, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Huh? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the page. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any hard of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take the chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts the lip as in this situation is completely natural. It's almost like it's happened before in a previous timeline when everything wasn't all messed up and terrible yet. But that means that I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... Nuclear waste... Uh, sorry, I guess I didn't, uh, shouldn't have done that. Uh, uh. Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't... Nuclear the waste. Suddenly, Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks to me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Nuclear waste. What? My heart. My heart won't stop pounding nuclear waste. I can't calm down. Why did it get dark? I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, nuclear waste? Yuri really suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. It even makes me not want to read. I just want to look at you. Oh, okay. Hey there. How's it going? Ha ha ha. Yeah. It's nice to see you too. Um, this is really, really unsettling. Can we get back to the book at any point in time? Ha! Your eyes are doing some something like that. Ha! What? It's just like the whole way. Hey, hey, Monica! Nothing happened. Whoa! Just reading, you know, like you do in literature club. Um. It's time to share poems. Okay. Um, who should I tell my poem to first? I, I don't, I don't, I don't know anything anymore, let alone who to share poems with. I, I guess Yuri, even though we did just kind of almost die in the dark there for a second. Maybe, maybe I just hold off on talking to Yuri just yet. I'll, I'll talk to Nasuki real quick, see how, how your poem is. Hmm. I liked your last one better. Huh? Really? Well, yeah, I can tell that you were a little bit more daring with this one, but you really not good enough yet for it. It felt flat. That may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. I'm still figuring this all out. Fair enough, you're still new to all this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. 
I mean, everyone in the club writes really differently from each other. Maybe you'll find a little influence from all of us. For instance, I noticed that you were spending some time with Yuri today. Not that I care who you spend your time with. After all, I was taught never accept anything from anybody. That's a little, a little depressing and sad. So it's not like I was waiting for you or anything. Well, now I just feel bad. Still, you should at least look over my poem. You'll probably be able to learn something from it. Amy likes spiders. Not, not this poem again. Oh, it's so, it's so sad and about how everyone hates Amy, I'm pretty sure. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, really hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang for the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. <laughs> One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. <laughs> That's why I'm not friends with her. Oh, Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world's better off without the spider lovers. <laughs> I get the meaning behind this poem now. But it's just funny to read. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna tell everyone. Alright, nice poem. I like it. 10 out of 10. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Uh, yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best that I could do. Uh, no, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Like, everyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'll make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Such like as two girls in this very club whom I respectfully won't name. There's only two other girls! What do you mean? Kind of ironic that everyone in one place of comfort, I can't even have people respect me. Jeez, now you're making me play too much. What did I do? <laughs> for what it's worth, I respect you. Well, I guess thanks, but it's kind of obvious that you respect Yuri more, so whatever. We're done sharing, so you can leave now. Well, I think Yusuke officially hates me at this point, so I don't know who I want to talk to. I'm kind of on the fence with the weirdness factor of both of these people. I guess I'll talk to Yuri. Alright. Hey, Yuri. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Da da da. Da 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 da. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Uh, you could waste. This one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you about the kind of technique worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving you more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. Ah, ah that makes me so happy. It's so amazing to feel like I'm value you could waste. Everything that you write is a treasure to me. My heart pounds just holding- Now maybe we hold off on the, the heart pounding just just for a moment? Ahaha. <laughs> I want to write a poem about this feeling. Is that bad you could waste? I'm not being weird, right? I'm, I'm having a harder time than usual in concealing my emotions. I'm kind of embarrassed. But right now, I just want you to read my poem too. Okay? Alright, no, yeah, no, that's fine, you know? Emotions are great, and you should you should share your emotions. I'm gonna be honest, I'm pretty bad at reading cursive, so this is probably gonna go awful. Wheel. A rotating wheel. Turning an axle. Grinding. Bolt head. Linear gearbox. Falling sky. Seven holy stakes. A docked ship. A portal to another world. A thin rope. Tied to a thick rope. <laughs> a torn harness. Parabolic gearbox. Expanding universe, true controlled by shipping cogwheels, existence of God, swimming with open water, 
in all directions, drowning. A prayer written in blood. A prayer written in time, devouring snakes with human eyes. <laughs> this poem's getting weird. A thread connecting all living human eyes. A kaleidoscope of holy stakes. Exponential gearbox. Is, is the gearbox a metaphor for how exponentially weirder this poem is getting? A sky exploding stars. God disapproving the existence of God. A wheel rotating in six dimensions. <laughs> Forty gears and a ticking clock. A clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet. A clock that ticks 40 times Every time it ticks every second time, that's really confusing. A bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a docked ship to another world. A kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks. <laughs> oh my god, this imagery is just, it's just too funny. A time devouring prayer connecting a sky of 40 gears. They open human eyes in all directions. Breathing gearbox, breathing bolt head, breathing ship. Breathing portal, breathing snakes, <laughs> breathing God, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing prayers, breathing sky, breathing wheel. Okay, that's that's cool. Ah uh, ha ha. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it all out on your pen. On on my on my, on my pen ah that's is a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday so i took it home for safekeeping and i um just really like the way it writes so i wrote this poem with it and now you're touching it the the poem or the pen ah, ha ha i'm i'm okay i uh, okay that's fine what did i just can we pretend that this conversation never happened you can keep the poem, though. Okay! Who should I show my poem to next? I guess Monica! I'm a little scared at this point! You can waste. I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. What? I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you. Which shouldn't be a problem in itself, but when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Oh. Oh my god. Was that what the, the dialogue was talking about? Oh my god. Jesus. Oh my god. Oh my god. I, I really did not expect to read those words. That's really serious. Isn't that kind of messed up? It's kind of sad. We should probably help her. She even brings a different one to school every day. Like she has a collection or something. Is that what the the knife comment in the first game was about? How she likes knives? Oh my... I'm sorry, it's just a very serious topic of self-harm, and I know a lot of people self-harm for different reasons, but you should know that you should never feel like you have to, and that if you ever see somebody or know somebody that you should expect of self-harming them, you should try to help them to get help or try to help them to the best of your abilities. And it's a very serious topic, but no one should ever feel like that they have to, or there's, there's always something else that could be better used to help you. Just know that. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be like a sexual thing. But the point is, you've kind of been enabling her. Oh, I'm okay. This is a very odd conversation, but I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you. So I think you keeping your distance, that would probably be for the best for her. While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little bit more time with me. To put it lightly, I at least have it together in the head, and I know how to treat my club members. That's a really kind of messed up thing to say. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? No, not really. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. The colors, they won't. Bright. 
beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. In endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violet grating what... I don't know what that's supposed to say. So, decaying, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable? Like playing a knife on a breathing ribcage. Endless poem of meaningless? Delete her. Delete who? And it is actually talking about deleting, like, from the game files? What what would happen if I deleted somebody from the game files? What the, what the fuck does this mean, Monica? Um, nope, nope, no, not, no. Bad. No. Sorry, the note's kind of abstract. It's kind of demonic, is what you mean. I'm just trying to, um... Well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes, you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. <laughs> you'll never know what, um... Who am I talking to? I don't know. Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. What? I'm gonna save my game real quick, cause this is- this is getting real creepy. Anything. What? Please help me. Okay. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. What? You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Sure! What the- What? Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Okay. 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 Everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today so everyone could come sit in the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. Well, we'll end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone has been a little bit more lively ever since Duke of the Waste joined and we started with some club activities, but this isn't the time for us to be complacent. We still only have four members, and the festival is only a real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Mizuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? Inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I don't know what I'm feeling anymore, but it doesn't want to bring me here anymore. The Literature Club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you can never want to leave. Why do you say it like that? Why does everything you have to do and say be creepy? I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival, even if something small. Right, Nuclear Ways? Don't involve me in this! Ah. Uh, uh, oh, come on. You can't take advantage of Nuclear Ways to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica. Do you really think any of us here join the club with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until Nuclear Waste joined. As for me, it looks like it's better here than I do at home. And Nuclear Waste isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who here is interested in finding new members. The rest of us are just fine like it is. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Da da da. Monica's clear taken back by Nasuke's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Nuclear Waste want to get more members too, right? Da -da -da. I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Manica wanted, then I'd probably be lying. Still, it's up to me to rescue the situation. Um, no. 
Yusuke's right, isn't she? This club, it's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean that we're against getting new members or anything. Yuki Louise, why did you even join this club? Well, I'm not really sure. What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something that I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice to join. Monica sits downstairs at her desk. What's the point of all this anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Dot dot dot. Now you've done it, Nisuki. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is that a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just... I just wanted a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't... There aren't many other places like that for me. And now, Monica wants to take it away from me. She's not taking anything away. No nuclear waste. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one, I mean, at least for a little bit of time, things were nice. Yusuke starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Yusuke. Yusuke ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. Da da da. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Oh, hey there! Who cares about the obnoxious brat? I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. And nobody would cry if she... Um... I'm gonna say that's enough of weirdness, creepiness for today. I don't know if we're right on the verge of a major event happening in the game, but right now, I'm just a little bit too much pushed over the creep factor to want to continue. This has been enough for me today. I, I've gotten all the literature club that I, that I can handle, and a lot has happened. A lot of bad stuff, but a lot has happened. In a way, some things are becoming more clear about the game, and why certain things are emphasized and why certain things have happened. But at the same time, I don't know how much more I want to learn because the way we're learning things is very kind of messed up. But either way, thank you all so much for joining today's adventure in Doki Doki Literature Club. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and hope you enjoyed the rest of the day as well. And hope to see you in our next adventure. Bye bye.